It's our job is to be reflections of Christ in the earth. And one of the best ways we can be reflections of Christ into the earth is fighting for people. Yeah. Like that's really how, how the masses were drawn to Jesus because his ability to heal and reach people. <laughs> like, and when you think about it, like God never got somebody to say, okay, let's sit down and say our ABCs. Uh, you know, accept, yeah. believe, confess. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, yep. you know, like he never did that. He yeah. people came to him. The good news of Christ is his love for people yep. and his plan to bring people unto him. And so he lived that, and yeah. it draw it drew people to him. Yeah. And whenever people were saved, he just said, "Go sin no more." <laughs> like, yeah. Like, you you you've had an interaction with me. You know, and God power is bigger than anything that we could have and so yeah. when we talk about social justice issues i genuinely believe it's part of god's plan yeah um, bring people to him to yeah. show people him yeah. his love for them yep. to reach out to them say look look just as much as i'm fighting for you jesus is fighting for you harder he loves you. He, he loves you so much that he sent me to fight to dismantle an entire system that keeps you and your people oppressed like Talk about the love and pursuit of Christ. Yeah. And so um, I think it's a key part. And, you know, I wanted to say some of these scriptures that I have pulled up. Proverbs 28, 5, evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand it completely. Mm -hmm. um, Psalms 106, 3, blessed are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Mm -hmm. um, Isaiah 61, 8, for I, the Lord, love justice. I hate mm -hmm. robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their mm -hmm. record. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Yeah. Micah 6, 8. He has told you, oh God, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and, and to love, love and, and to, to walk, walk humbly with your God. God. That's all he asked of us. That's all he asked. Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with our God, okay? Um, no, and, and man, what you were saying about like, is about, about Jesus and people being drawn to Jesus because in the Bible, it's clear. People were drawn to him because he he was unconditional love and acceptance. And it's like, we think that we represent God by giving people a list of sins, a list of things they do or should or shouldn't do. That is not how Jesus came to us. He came to us to show us that the Father loves us and he sees us right where we are and he accepts us. And yes, he will show us how to live a life that is more pleasing to him. But he decided that he wanted to fight for us before we ever did anything to earn it or deserve it. The ministry of Jesus, when you look at how Jesus brought, so like, if we're talking about evangelism, you were talking about bringing people into, into a relationship with Christ. The way Jesus got them was meeting their need. Yeah. That's literally like, he never was like, okay, well, you know, you got to be saved first and then you would join a church and then we'll right. take care of you. No. He was like, oh, you're blind? Let me go ahead and heal that. Go sin no more. Oh, they about to stone you? Uh huh. Cat, who, who, who has never seen cats first no? Like he yes. met people where mm -hmm. they were. Yeah. He cared about groups that nobody else cared about and yeah. he fought for them. Yeah. And that is that is the message of Christ. That is the good news that I, the God of the universe, cares so much about you that I care about every single one of your burdens. Mm -hmm. I care about every single one of your issues. I care about your problems and so much that I will pursue after you. I'm gonna meet you where you are. I'm gonna yeah. meet you meet your needs and your mm -hmm. wants and your desires. I'm going to meet you where you are. Mm -hmm. That is the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. That is the unconditional love of Christ. So we talk about unconditional love. Love is meeting people where they are. Yeah. It's caring about their plight. Yeah. It's saying, hey, I might not be affected with this, but because you're going through it, I'm going to walk with you through it. That is the that is the good news, and that is evangelism, and we miss that. Yeah. We miss that by boiling it down to this ABC, the set, believe, and confess. Let's get everybody to if I, I got to get this person to do this, this, you know, little phrase and I've done my due diligence in spreading the good news. No, the good news includes God's love for justice. The good news includes God's love for humanity to treat people kindly, to show them the love of Christ and to meet people where they are. So one of the biggest affronts with the white, great white evangelicals who love to erase social justice issues is that god cares about those things yep. and we should care about those things yep. and so if we're going to be meeting people where they are despite the fact of whether you believe it or not if you are hurting if i'm saying i'm hurting as a christian do you really have the love of christ in your heart to hear someone say i am yep. hurting and then you turn and you say oh that that hurt doesn't exist right Is that really, you need to look inside of yourself and say do i really have the love of christ if i can hear someone say that i am hurting yeah. and not care about it yeah. no you probably don't because yeah. when 
whenever we hurt, the Lord cares about that. Yep. The Lord said, talks about if I care about the lilies in the valley, if I care about the birds in the sky, how yep. much more do I care about you and what you're going through? Yep. So if, as Christians, if we can hear a community say, oh, I am hurting, I'm in pain, and yeah. we say, oh, we don't care, yeah. then I am questioning whether you genuinely have the love of Christ in your heart. And so as Black people, that's one of the hardest things I face mm -hmm. with, deal with Christians who would love to erase social justice issues or the harms and the ills that black exactly. people are going through, or the harms and the ills that I experience as a black woman in this society. If I'm sitting here and I say I'm hurting and you just keep on walking, do you really have Jesus in your heart? We have to yes. reincorporate in our theology that mm -hmm. reaching people includes caring about what they're going through. Yes. And that includes social justice issues. We should care about the poor. We should care about the hardships that people are going through because God cares about them. Yep, yep, 100%. You better say that. You mean you better say it two times, okay? Say it to people in the back because, and it's like what's what's really tough is that some of people don't, people don't only just like not listen. Some of Christians actually make it worse sometimes. Like I think about the LGBTQ community and it's just oh, like, you're not they've been telling us, telling us how painful. We are hurting. And it's just like, you're so focused on telling somebody, don't do this, you're going to go to hell. And it's like, what people really need to know is how much God loves them. That's what they need to know is how much God loves them and that God accepts them. Just take a minute to see people and listen. Don't just only focus on getting your message and your agenda across. Yes. Because here's the thing. I had a conversation with a friend about this the other day. It's like, God does call us to obedience, but first he has to call us. Yo, we're trying to call people to obedience and call people to obey a God that they don't even know. And they're not getting to know him any better through us. Mm -mm, not at all. You're coming not with a to-do list and a laundry list of what somebody needs to do and not do so that, they can, so that they can serve a God that they've never experienced. And you're not even helping them to experience that God. It's like what Jesus said about the Pharisees. They, they make all these requirements to get into the kingdom of God and they don't, they don't even go in the kingdom of God themselves. Yeah, not at all. And I think really goes down to, and we, like, if you want to... Let me spill some tea. If you really want to get into the tea of it, there are a lot of Christians who struggle. With, and, the, I, and this is really sitting in my spirit because um, with church today, that was what the message was about. It was about pride. And it really mm -hmm. tore me up because I'm like, whoo, I didn't think I struggled with pride. But let me reevaluate. And just thinking about that message within the context of the conversation I knew that we were going to have, I really feel like Christians struggle with pride. We are extremely prideful in that we feel like we are in the position to save people. Mm. We feel like we we play we play God, and right. like again, we haven't learned from our history right. that man's original sin was trying to be like to be God. Mm -hmm. They're trying to step into the shoes of God, and we are still struggling with that to yeah. this day. In that we feel like we can play God. Yeah, we feel like it is our job to save people, and it, we we. I feel like we insult God. Mm -hmm. We insult the power and sovereignty of his ability to bring people to him. Mm -hmm. Our job is to get them there. Our right. job is our job bring is you to God. God. Let me get you get you God together. can get you together. I can't make you God together. can get us together, but we sit there and we try to play God in people's yep. life. We try to say, Oh, fix this, do that, do this and that. And we first of all, we're not first of all in the position to but we definitely don't have the ability to do it do it the way god does god is loving and kind and gentle with his correction and his with his revelation right. and his his plan for us yeah. is all individualized right is but mm -hmm. we try to sit there and and to create this like blanketed plan that every god has for everybody it's like my plan looks different from your plan and one of like my biggest real, realizations of that and I'll never forget this. I was doing an internship in Columbus and I was driving. Um, my aunt was awesome and let me like use the car and I just like picked her up and dropped her off. And so I was on the way to pick her up from work. And it was this guy and I've never seen this before. Tatted up biker, mm -hmm. like pierced, like he looked rough, like, oh my gosh. And he had this big price and was like, um, bikers for Christ. Mm -hmm. I, I was that. like, how dare I judge this man? Right. I'm like, oh my God, I need pray for that. Right. But it was like he like and I'm like how beautiful it is that God calls us to walk with him so differently. My call is not the same as your call. And we like to sit here and try to to impose what we think Christians should look like. And we are literally playing God. We right. are playing God and we need to repent. We right. need to repent. And the yeah. same the same way that white Christians love to try to dictate 
what is important for us to focus on yeah. literally is stepping in the place of God. Mm -hmm. God's word is clear. What he has said, what he has said about what matters to him is clear. Mm -hmm. And if you are sitting there going against him, that's literally you playing God. And that is rebellion. And that mm -hmm. is just like the sin in the garden of Eden. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And yeah, the idea that like we can like, even, and the thing is, even if, even if you're right, like, okay, because like some people, they have Bible to back up what they're saying we're supposed to do and what we're not supposed to do. Okay, whatever. Say you're right. Like, we all have areas where we fall short of the glory of God. Like, so why are you trying to make somebody feel like they're not good enough for God? Why are you trying to make somebody feel like they are not acceptable to God? And it's like, the only way that God is ever going to help us to be better is in his presence and in relationship with him. So if you constantly convince people that they're not good enough for God and that keeps them away from God, you're only going to you're only going to cause them to stay in in their struggle because you're you're keeping them away from the only person, the only one that can actually you know, And you know what's so funny about that is that a lot of times Christians feel like they need to be hard on sin because they feel like the blood is on their hand, but really pushing people away from Christ literally makes the blood on your hand. Right. Now the blood is actually on your hands because you just made me feel like I couldn't come to the only one that could save me and heal me. Yeah, and that should be even more scary. That yeah. should be more scary. The the fact of pushing someone away from being in a relationship with God should be scarier than the presence of sin because honestly, I feel like sin, like God, God literally sent Jesus because he knows he sin. dealt with sin. sin. He's not shocked by sin. He's he not dealt like, with it. Oh my gosh. Like, okay, anyway, that's beside the point. I feel like we really do need to to mm -hmm. continue to push a uh, better understanding and incorporation of how God cares about all people. And mm -hmm. he cares about every single issue, every single plight, every single um, challenge that people go through. And when people are hurting, he cares. And yeah. it's our job as Christians and conduits of his love and yeah. his healing to be that in the earth. And so yeah. when a group says they're hurting, Yep. We should care about that. Yep. We should genuinely take a vested interest in the fact that a group is saying they're hurting. And that's how I feel like with black people. And that's why I think like with what we're talking about, like God is pro-black, like mm -hmm. he cares about black issues because it hurts us. Yep. It's hurting his image bearers. Yep. And as Christians, we have to take an equally vested interest in those things. Yeah, that's so true. And email just raised an important question. He said, what about the other side of not having enough pride because you don't want to be the pushy Christian. And I think that um, if I would speak to that, I think that the biggest thing that I've learned is knowing your place in people's lives. I think that it's really hard to tell people what they should or shouldn't do and you don't even have a relationship with them. And so I think that, that it's okay to be a spokesperson for God and call people to righteousness. But I think that the context to do that in is much better suited for like an actual relationship where you know them and they know that you care. But it's like how it says people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I think that's kind of how it is with, with us trying to tell people what how God wants us to live. It's not that we shouldn't speak truth about like the things that God calls us to, but it's like, are you speaking that truth to somebody who already knows that you love them, who already knows that you're a safe space for them, so that if you say that to them, they don't feel attacked. Sometimes people, Christians, sometimes just want to tell everybody or just tell people you don't even know, you're sinning and you're this and you're that. And it's just like, you don't even know me. I don't even know that you care about me. Why would I listen to you? Who are you? You know what I mean? And so that's what I would say to that. It's like, I don't, I don't think we have to not say anything, but it's like, what's the context that you're saying it in? And are you, are you first and foremost communicating and, and, and demonstrating the love of God? Because it's the love is what creates safety for us to really say anything to anybody. And really just to underscore that, like the Bible talks about accountability within the context of those who are in relationship with Christ. Right. Right. So like, why, what's the, what's the, what's the if you don't know this person has a relationship with christ why are you even saying anything right and my, my personal like my personal bent is like i trust god i really i've and i've struggled with trust and i still struggle with trust mm -hmm. and so i know for me that hits harder for me but like in my older age I literally can only trust God. Right. I can't do it on my own. Yeah. I have no power or ability. Yeah. And so one of the most powerful things you can do is to submit it in the hand of God. Mm -hmm. And I genuinely believe that when you have a relationship with people, it grants you special access to pray for them. Mm -hmm. And I believe uh, in access to speak into their lives and to pray for them yeah. and intercede on their behalf.
So like when you're in relationship, it allows you to intercede in a different way. Yeah. And so I really pray very strategically mm-hmm. about everybody in my life that I'm mm-hmm. in relationship with. And I trust God to yeah. lead and guide them. And yeah. my the best thing I can do for anybody yeah. is to encourage them to be in relationship with God. Yeah. And that's all I can do. Yeah. Again, our job as Christians is to get them there. Yeah. You can't, you can't do anything after that. Like, yeah. it is in God's hand. It's in God's God. sovereign. And we try to play God. I mm-hmm. am not God. And mm-hmm. I cannot make anybody do anything. Mm-hmm. And so my biggest thing is, like, let's get you into a relationship with God. Let me walk with you in that relationship. And let me encourage you in your mm-hmm. relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Outside of that, I can't say anything. I, I just don't say anything because it's not my place. I believe yeah. that the Holy Spirit is good. And he will push and nudge and lead people in the right direction. And that's on them. Yeah. Like, that, they're, they're, my walk doesn't impact you. And your yeah. walking doesn't impact me. I have to be saved for myself. Yeah. And I cannot save anybody. Yeah. And so like, the, I know what the Lord has led me to do in the direction that he's placed on my life. And I have no place or space to speak yeah. on anybody else's walk. Once yeah. they're in relationship with God, God is sovereign. Yeah. And my job is to encourage them in their relationship and their walk with Christ. And yeah. That's it. That's it. That's all. No, and then <laughs> what you said about like people needing to be in relationship with Christ first. Like that's the other thing. It's like, it's like, I feel like Christians a lot of times want to make everybody else try to live as Christians. And it's like, if they're not a Christian, why are you trying to hold them to the, to the standard that God is calling you to? Like, imagine this. I, I just think about it in the opposite sense. Like, I'm like, imagine if somebody who was Muslim came up to me and tried to tell me about eating pork. And I'm like, I'm not Muslim. I don't think that eating pork is a sin. So why are you trying to make me not eat pork? You know what I mean? And that's just a small example. But it's like Christians do that to people. It's like, we have our own ideas about how God wants us to live and stuff. We want to force it on other people. And it's just like, God, how, how, how does that, what's the logic? Like, you know what I mean? And so it's like, yeah, it's, it's a we, lot. It's a lot. We try to play God. It's the same thing. Like, okay, we're about to get stuck on a lot of Christian's toes and I'm so sorry, but like <laughs> the tattoos. Oh Lord. And that's, I can, we, can, we, can we please talk about, I know this is not talking about God being pro-black, but I think it, it goes to show how we try to impose, yeah. we, have to, we try to play God. God hasn't called, God that hasn't called, God might not call you to that. Mm-hmm. God might place a, and you know, Paul talks about that. Like me personally, mm-hmm. I'm not convicted about it. whatever I eat is good and fine, but you know, I'm mindful about making sure I'm not making, a, having mm-hmm. a stumbling block for other Christians or mm-hmm. other people who are new to the faith. So as long as it's not a stumbling block, then let me do, then you do what you do and you live by the convictions that the Lord has placed on you. Literally, mm-hmm. you know, I love paraphrasing, but literally the Bible explains it like that. Yeah. And so but what so happens is, what happens is we try to play God in people's lives mm-hmm. in our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ's life and people who are non-believers. Yeah. We try to play God and enforce on them our personal convictions. Yeah. So you might be convicted to get not get a tattoo, right. but the next, again, that biker gang guy, he, I, Probably that, 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 like, is in great relationship with God, but that's that not his conviction. But what I, what, what Christians will do, what Christians will do is say, because I'm convicted about getting a tattoo, you, you can't get a tattoo. Right. And you are not walking in Christ, and you are right. not godly because it's my conviction about getting a tattoo, and you got a tattoo, so you must not be walking in Christ. It's yeah, like, it's like yeah, can we just mind each other's business? Yeah. 2021, can we please? Okay. Our own mind business, our please. Business <laughs> Minding our business. Yeah, no, that's real. That's real, 100%. And I think Imani said people are trying to win souls. And it's like, I think that me and Natalie are both 100% fans of, like, sharing Christ and, like, inviting people into a relationship with God. I think that what we're kind of more so getting at is just, like, how do you do that? And basically saying, like, it's not an effective strategy to try to, like, bring people in by just telling them everything they're doing wrong and everything that they're not and everything that they, like, no, we, I think we already live in a society that puts so much pressure on, where we put so much pressure on ourselves to, to perform. And I struggle with performing in my relationship, in relationship with God, where it's like, there, we've been taught so much religion that it's like, it, I struggle with feeling like, I just started three different devotionals, all focused on, on a theme of being enough. Mm-hmm. I, am, I am deeply in relationship with God and I still struggle with the basic, un, like the basic assumption that I am enough. And that's as someone who knows that I'm a daughter of God. So why are we why are make, we making people feel less than who are not even in relationship with God and, and exacerbating those insecurities? We should be encouraging people that they're enough, that God loves them, that God chose them, that God accepts them, and that if there's anything imperfect about them, that God is the one that can perfect them. You know? We can. 
We yeah. literally, can't. I have no ability to do that for somebody. Yeah. And Jesus has already died on the cross for that. Yep. He's already carried that burden. It is not ours to take on. And I think sometimes we try to step into the place of God by doing that, mm -hmm. by taking on the burden of uh, other people's walks with Christ. Mm -hmm. And we cannot do that. We just can't. We can't put that burden on ourselves. It's 100%. just it's too much to bear. It's too much to bear. Yeah. Too, much, too much in Spanish. Um, yeah. yeah. Man, this has been so good. <laughs> This has been so good. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't span the whole range of topics. Like we set up talking about God and justice and blackness and all this stuff. And we also talked a little bit about just like the process of really trying to reflect God to people. But I think that that, I think it's actually fitting that, that both of those topics ended up in this conversation because the, the reason it's so important to stand for justice is because that is a way that we reflect God to people. That is the way that we reflect that God cares. That is the way that we reflect that God is just. That's the way that we reflect that God is right. That is the way that we reflect that God cares about people being treated as people like that are precious because we're precious to God. And so it's all interconnected. And I'm glad that we touched on all those topics. So Nat, do you have anything to add? Love God. Love people. White people. Do the work of repentance. Black people. Do the work of forgiveness and unity and working to fight and raise and elevating our voice and creating the community that we deserve as image bearers of Christ, um, holding uh, others accountable to how they treat our community and how they treat us and fighting for our beautiful blackness in this country. Love others, let people mind your business. Um, yeah. <laughs> all, of that, all of that. Yeah. I guess I'll just add like, anybody that's watching this like god loves you like crazy he created you like if you're black god loves my blackness and yours okay um and he cares he cares about the injustice we experience as a people group and on a systemic level and he cares about the injustice and the pains that you experience as an individual you know before this live i was processing some personal pain with god it's like he's he's there and he's in it for all of it and so and anybody that feels like they're not good enough for god that's a lie and I know that's not the topic of this live, but I just have to say that because that's always important to share. It's a lie that you're not good enough for God. You are good enough, not because we're good enough in ourselves, but because Jesus, look, we don't, let's get the gospel here because Jesus, okay, the son of God came and lived a perfect life and died a sinner's death so that we could be reconciled to God. He came and showed us how to live. And if you ever want to know how God feels about you, look at how Jesus treated people. Look at what Jesus said. Don't look at people who are imperfectly modeling God. Don't look at people who, are processing God through their own pride, through their own biases, and then reflecting that back to you. Go to the source and he will show you just how he feels about you and just how much he loves you. So with that being said, I hope that everybody has a great rest of your Sunday. If you wanna hear more about God and justice, I have a couple of videos up on my channel from after watching the Harriet movie. They're posted as Harriet movie reviews and I kind of touch on that there. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe, like, share, comment. I'm looking forward to doing this again. We'll definitely be back to uh, talk some more. So love y'all. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks for having me. <laughs>